Hello everybody, we are here on the Hunter Call of the Wild and with the recent launch of Call of the Wild on the Epic Games Store, they decided to do a week where you could get the game for free. Now this does not include any of the DLC, it's just the uh, base game, but because of that I'm sure there's quite a few of you that are new to the game and are looking for... I guess some uh, tips and tricks on how to progress faster and how to uh, play the game to uh, give you a better experience. And when you first open up the game, you'll get the option to create a new game with a character and the map of your choice. I have done uh, Leighton Lakes every single time that I've done it because Leighton Lakes is by far the best of the two maps that you get with the base game. Uh, it's definitely going to be easier to find animals on Leighton than it will on Hirschfelden, except in certain scenarios, and we will talk about that a little bit later, but once you start your game and you have claimed the, uh, the initial kill that they give you along with the first outpost, you will go to, or uh, not outpost, but the first lookout tower, you will go to an outpost next, and this will be the first one that you have here on Leighton. It'll be different, obviously, if you choose Hirschfelden, but I highly recommend choosing Leighton. Uh, we're not going to go over the whole, like, first steps, because the game kind of already walks you through everything there. Uh, however, what we are going to go over is some of the things that you'll want to know after you get done with that. So, once you come up to an outpost and have claimed it with this uh, pole right here, you're probably going to want to go over here to the cache, and that's because this is where you can purchase stuff. It's also where you can check your storage and uh, remove and add equipment. When you first start, these are the three guns that they're going to give you. The 243, the 357, and the 12 gauge. I don't recommend using the 357 or the 12 gauge, but what you will want to use is the Ranger 243. This will be pretty much your go-to gun until you can get some better stuff unlocked. You will get this 270 Stradivarius for free as far as I remember. I believe everybody that plays the game gets this for free unless they're going to change some things with the Epic Games version, which is uh, entirely possible. But you will have this to start out with, but you won't have access to the ammo, so you will need to use the 243 until you get uh, access to the ammo for the 270. When you first start the game out, you're only going to have access to one type of ammo, which is the 243 soft points, as far as I remember. I believe you do have to kill a few animals before you will get access to the uh, 243 polymer tips. However, if you do have access to these off the bat, uh, because I honestly don't remember if you do or not, then go ahead and purchase some of these because the polymer tip bullets are a bit better to use than the soft points. In general, as long as you're not tight on cash, you're always going to want to go with the polymer tip bullets. When you first start, you might want to use the soft points until you get a little bit of cash built up just because they're cheaper, but the polymer tips have much better penetration, which is what you really need to get into the vital organs of animals. A lot of times when you're using the soft points, there's certain angles that you just can't shoot animals at because it can't get into a vital organ, and we're going to talk a little bit more about uh, shot placement and things like that later on in this video, but uh, first off, polymer tip bullets are always the way to go in every case. And if whatever gun you're looking at does not have a polymer tip ammo type, then just choose the one that has the highest penetration, because in most cases, penetration is going to be more important than expansion. Another thing that will be pretty important is getting collars, especially if you're new to the game or uh, just want to make it a little bit easier to get shots on animals. Collars are extremely important because whenever you're within the range that it states on the collar, you will be able to attract animals of whatever species the collar is used for. So for example, one of the ones that you will get when you start is the deer bleat collar. You'll also get, I believe, the roe deer collar and the jackrabbit collar. So these attract a variety of animals. We're not going to go over all of that because this is meant to be kind of like just a quick guide, but collars, super important. Highly recommend using them if you're newer to the game. They can make things a lot easier. A lot of them are at higher levels, unfortunately, for things like the Red Deer. I believe this collar is like level 27 or something like that, so it takes a little bit to get to, but they're definitely worth it when you do get access to them. And as far as the equipment goes, I wouldn't really recommend using any of these scents. I mean, they do work, but it's very slow, and in most cases, I've just found them not to be that useful. And as far as the consumables go, the only ones you'll have when you start is Scent Eliminator and First Aid Kit. A scent Eliminator doesn't really work that well, so I don't recommend ever spending money on it. However, the First Aid Kits are extremely useful for any time that you get damaged. Uh, it'll definitely save your life many, many times, as it has mine. As far as the clothing goes, this doesn't actually affect anything at all in-game. It doesn't make you 
uh, harder for animals to see or reduce scent or anything like that. It's all cosmetics, so just wear whatever you want. And now uh, on to another thing that you can wear, which I would never recommend using, is the backpacks. These are not good. Now, a lot of people have the impression that it can be nice to have the extra space, and in, in some cases it is nice to have extra carrying capacity. However, these will greatly increase the range at which animals will spook, so I never recommend using a backpack no matter what. You'll be spooking animals from much farther away if you do use them. Even the smallest one still adds like, I think, 50 meters to your spook range, or 30, or somewhere in that range, 30 to 50 meters if I remember correctly, which is not good. It really does not help you out with getting more animals. When it comes to rifle sights, it really comes down to personal preference. I definitely recommend getting the Hyperion as soon as it gets unlocked for you. It will make your life so much easier. The starter scope is kind of difficult to use, so I definitely recommend trying to get a better scope as soon as it gives you the option. So now that we have kind of gone over a lot of the base equipment that you'll want to use, uh, let's talk real briefly about some of the DLCs that you might want to purchase. I know not everybody's going to want to buy DLC, but there are quite a few of them that are very beneficial to you and your character. I would definitely recommend if you don't get anything else, get Weapon Pack 1 and Wild Goose Chase because they do give you so many more options when it comes to... Uh, leveling up your character because geese are easily the best method for money and XP There's a lot of goose guides out there. I've got one myself even I believe so if you're wanting to get that DLC uh, That's probably gonna be your best way to level up is to get the weapon pack one with the goose DLC uh, They're just such a crazy combo because you have the 22 rifle in the weapon pack one along with the uh, goose decoys and the collar for the goose DLC and it it's just incredible it's easily the fastest way to level up. Some other DLCs that I would definitely recommend getting, uh, map-wise, I'd say Yukon and Tiawaroa because both of those come with very good guns. Tiawaroa comes with the 303 rifle, and Yukon comes with the 300 Magnum, which both these these are arguably the best guns for their classes. So I would definitely recommend getting those two maps if you're looking to get some better weapons. The high-tech hunting pack is also really good for night hunting. It has night vision scopes and binoculars, which if you're hunting some of the species that drink at night, that is also going to be pretty important. The tree stand and tripod DLC is also a pretty incredible uh, DLC just for those tripods because they will reduce the hunting pressure that you create from killing animals and we're gonna get to a hunting pressure in a little bit as well uh, the last one that I would recommend is the ATV DLC and also the tents and ground blind DLC both of these you get for free if you're on Xbox or PlayStation but for some reason you have to purchase it when you're on PC I under I honestly don't understand it but if you're on PC, those are definitely a couple good ones to get as well, because tents will basically create fast travel points across the map wherever you place them, and that is extremely useful. So now let's talk a little bit about what are the best guns with no DLC. So I think for the most part, people can agree that the uh, 7 millimeter is probably the best gun that you can get if you don't have DLC and that is this gun right here. It's incredibly powerful. It can kill classes five to nine on animals, which five is the highest class that they go. Uh, we'll get into that soon as well. Uh, but 7mm, fantastic gun. The 270 is also pretty good until you're able to unlock the uh, 7mm, so it's another good rifle. I don't recommend getting the 223 ever. It's just not super good at all. Um, the lever actions I wouldn't bother with either unless you just want something fun. And then the 338 is probably going to be your go-to for the large game classes 7 to 9. It's very strong. Uh, 243 is actually going to be a gun that you'll have with you pretty much the whole time. This is the one that you start with so you don't even have to pay for it. And it's definitely the best gun for smaller species like foxes and coyotes and stuff like that. And we do actually have one more DLC that I forgot about that is pretty incredible. And that is just because you will be able to get one of the greatest rifles in the game if you purchase this DLC, which is the Smoking Barrels Weapon Pack. Uh, the M1 is arguably the best rifle in the game to a lot of people. I don't think it's quite as good because it's not as powerful as the 303, but it is a very solid rifle. It's got a fast fire rate, very powerful round being the 30-06. So that's another really good one that you can get with a uh, weapon pack, smoking barrels. 
Honestly, this guide is just all over the place. I'm forgetting stuff. I hope this is at least somewhat easy to understand because uh, this is a lot harder to plan out than I expected it to be because I end up forgetting information and then remembering more information. Uh, hopefully this all ends up being somewhat easy to understand for anybody that's just getting into the game. So now that we have gone over pretty much everything to do with the store and what equipment to buy and things like that, it's probably time that we take a look at the perks and skills. Now until I believe level 30, you're going to get a skill or perk point every single level and then after that you start getting them like every other level. So if it starts slowing down the amount you're getting, don't worry too much about that. It's supposed to be that way. But there is uh, quite a few different perks and skills to talk about, so we're not going to do that. I'm probably going to make a separate video talking about the perks and skills, but this is the layout that I've got if you're curious uh, on what I'm using and want to maybe copy my layout. Uh, this is what I use for Stalker and Ambusher. And then for the perks, I use uh, these ones right here. So we'll just briefly go over each of them, give you time to screenshot. Uh, we're not going to talk about them in this video just because it would be way too much uh, time that would go into just talking about this. So we'll probably make a separate video for it. The next thing that we need to talk about before we actually go into any hunting is what need zones are and what hunting pressure is. So whenever you have an animal on the map, whether it be a herd of animals or a single animal, they will all have need zones, which will be sleeping zones or uh, resting zones, I mean, feeding zones and drinking zones. And depending on what time of day it is, they will be at one of those zones. They're always at a need zone, except for the times that they're traveling from one zone to another. And if there's any particular species that you want to hunt, there is uh, quite a few different sources around the internet that you can go to to find the different need zone times for each animal if there's any one in particular you're wanting to hunt. I definitely recommend hunting the drink zones over anything else because they're by far the easiest to hunt because you know anywhere that there is water there is a chance of drink zones. So I definitely recommend going for drink zones instead of resting or... Uh, eating zones and uh, speaking of zones we actually have some whitetail right here in a feed zone and as you can see when we spotted that whitetail it discovered the feed zone and it will show it on your map right where that feed zone is so what we're gonna do now is talk about hunting pressure hunting pressure is something that happens whenever you shoot an animal it'll add a little bit of pink to the map let's see if we can find some this is hunting pressure right here so this right here is probably the hunting pressure from like two kills Basically, it gets more bright pink the more you kill over the same spot. And you don't want to shoot more than three animals over top of a need zone, or else you have the chance of deleting that need zone. And that is not something you want to do. It's good to take care of your need zones and try not to delete them too much. So I don't recommend shooting more than three animals over a need zone. And then after that happens, you will want to hunt in, air in other areas until that hunting pressure clears out completely and that will uh, prevent you from deleting your need zones. And like I said a little bit ago, I don't recommend hunting the feeding zones or the resting zones because they are much harder to get to and they're more spread out. I highly recommend hunting drink zones because uh, for example, let's say you wanna pick like literally any lake on this map, you can see that drink zones are only gonna be along the water. And uh, for example, like right here, all these are black tail deer drink zones. So if you are after black tail deer, then there's going to be like certain lakes or rivers where you can find lots of zones of them. But if you were looking at feed zones, they might be spread out quite a bit in random spots throughout the map. But if you're going for the drink zones, they're going to be close to water. And a lot of feed zones and uh, resting zones are also near water. So the biggest tip I can give is just hunt near water all the time. No matter what you're doing, even if you're not going for any specific species and uh, aren't really paying attention to what the drink times are, it, just hunting near water is going to still increase your chances of finding stuff by quite a lot. Although I do recommend doing the research and learning about all the times and and even taking a look at some video guides from various creators on the drink zones for certain species. It will help quite a bit with your success. Now that we have finished talking about the need zones, let's start stocking up on these deer over here. And also, I just wanted to real quickly mention uh, the Bloodhound that I have with me. This is also a DLC item, so you won't get it with the base game, but it is a pretty good DLC to get. It will help with tracking quite a bit, so if you're having trouble finding animals after you've shot them, uh, the Bloodhound's probably going to be the best help for that. 
But now that we've finished talking about the need zones, let's go ahead and talk about the animal class system. So basically what they have in Call of the Wild is animals are classed based off of, uh, I believe, primarily their size and whether or not they're a uh, aggressive animal. They're classed through levels or uh, classes one through nine. So for example, right here, this white tailed deer, you'll see a number towards the top right. Now, a lot of this stuff won't be visible when you first start because stuff like the weight of the deer and the trophy score and the health, that is all unlocked via perks and skills. I can't remember whether it's in perks or skills. I think it's in skills. So you'll unlock that all through the skills. Uh, but the one number that will always be up there, well, there's two actually, but one of them is the uh, little number in the top right. This one is a class four animal. So that means you'll have to use an ammo type that covers class four. And if we take a look at the ammo of our 243, let's just take a look here. You will see that it says recommended classes two to six. So you could shoot classes two, three, four, five, and six with the 243. And I've got the soft points on me right now because that is what you will start with when you first open up the game. And uh, I didn't want to use the polymer tips since you don't necessarily get those immediately. But I do recommend using poly tips over soft points. We're just using the soft points for the sake of uh, this being like the first animal we kill. Now we're going to go ahead and talk about the other number that you will see when you first uh, open the game and first spot your animal. The other number that you'll be able to see is the level of the animal. Now. Every single animal in the game has like a different level uh, system that they go off of. Uh, for Whitetail, their max level is level 3. Uh, for something like a Blacktail Deer, the max level is 5. Uh, for something like a Bobcat, the max level is 9. It's different depending on the animal, so I definitely recommend also looking that up on Google. There is various different spreadsheets and stuff like that that tells you the max levels of each animal. Uh, a lot of helpful info in with a game like Call of the Wild. Google is your best friend. It really is. But now that we have kind of got this deer in front of us, we're going to try and get it to turn broadside because you don't want to take frontal shots uh, in most cases, especially with soft point ammo. It can end pretty badly. Uh, this one has just gone alert. So what we're going to do now is prone and we're going to wait for it to go completely sideways. Now you won't have a lot of uh, magnification with this scope that you start out with, uh, it'll get better once you unlock more, but we're going to wait for this deer to go completely sideways, and then we're going to take a shot at the crease in its shoulder. Unfortunately it didn't really uh, stay there that long this time, so we are going to have to try and get it to do that again. And obviously when you first start out and don't have a lot of perks and skills, it's not going to be easy to get this close to the animals, but uh, you guys kind of still get the idea. You want to make sure that you get close enough to at least be comfortable with your shot and then once they turn broadside if we could get one of them to do that we'll want to take a shot at the crease in the shoulder just like that after you've shot your animal you will want to run up to where you shot it and if you see a big pool of blood like this congratulations you just vitally hit your deer and it'll tell you that you got a vital organ hit if you didn't get a vital hit, it'll be a much smaller blood pool and it'll uh, tell you that you didn't hit uh, vital organs. So then you just follow the trail. And uh, for us, this deer did not run far at all. As long as you get a vital hit, this will be the case most of the time. And uh, the reason we use the crease of the shoulder is because it's a really good reference point. Uh, it gives you an idea of where to aim on most species because that is where the lungs are. And it's like that on most animals. You always want to aim for this little crease right here because that will, nine times out of ten, get you into the lungs with most species. And in Call of the Wild, head shots are not really something you want to do. Spine shots aren't either because that will ruin your uh, trophy score, which that's the next thing we're going to take a look at now that we're on the harvest screen. So you get a bunch of different information about the animal up here. You get class four being its class. Uh, you get gender male weight, 79.56 kgs, uh, fur type common. There is different rare fur variations you can find as well. Uh, tracking distance 47 meters. That's just the distance from the first track that we picked up from this animal uh, Difficulty level 2 minor these guys max out at level 3 uh, Trophy type antlers and trophy organ skull. So 
when you look right here, this is the score of the animal. And if you hover over it, it'll show you all the different scores for the different medals. So to get a silver medal, it needs to be 112 or higher. For a gold, it needs to be 193.70. And for diamond, it needs to be 255 or higher. Now, whitetail are one of the only two species that have a metal even higher than diamond, and that is the uh, Great One metal, which is an extremely rare deer to find. It's uh, something most people don't even get to see because it is so incredibly rare, but they're the only animal that can actually go up to level 10 is the uh, fabled Great Ones, and only the whitetail and red deer have those currently. They're kind of like a special one that can very rarely spawn once you kill an animal. Uh, but real quickly, we should probably take a look at the harvest check here. So there, you know, there's going to be four different criteria you have to meet in order to get full score on an animal. If you fail one of them, it drops one metal. So you need the proper ammo for this animal, which for us, we use the 243 soft point, which covers its class. Uh, we shot it two times or less because we only shot it once. Uh, we didn't shoot it in the head. So we have an intact trophy organ, that's this right here. The trophy organ of the whitetail is the skull, that's what it is on most species, so never aim for the head on anything. Always aim for the lungs like I was talking about, and that will ensure that you get an intact trophy organ. And then hit one vital organ or more, and the vital organs are the lungs, the liver, the heart, and uh, technically the brain is also vital, but because you'd have to hit the skull in order to hit the brain, it's not really something you can do. Uh, neck shots are also considered vital as long as you hit the vertebrae right there, so it's uh, very difficult to hit the neck bones. But if you're accurate enough, that's also another way to uh, hit vitals, and it typically drops them on the spot. Don't recommend trying it, but if you're uh, confident enough in your aim, then you can go for that as well. And the very last thing that we'll take a look at here on the harvest screen is uh, these buttons over here. So if you own a lodge, you can taxonomize the animals and put them up in your lodge to look at. It's uh, pretty awesome. However, the lodges do cost money to purchase. It is a DLC item. But if you uh, don't have the lodge and you still want to save a trophy, you can save up to 10 of them right here. And you can even tax them without owning a lodge. That way, if you're wanting to get a lodge eventually in the future, but you don't have it right then, you can still tax the animal or save it. And then be able to put it in your lodge once you get the lodge. So that is another pretty cool thing about... Uh, I guess kind of like the uh, DLC system in Call of the Wild, a lot of things like you're still able to do things without the DLCs, it's just the DLCs make it easier or more accessible. And we actually have some deer on top of us, uh, let's uh, real quickly just show another shot, actually that one spooked, uh, let's see if we can get a next shot real quick. There we go, so that's the next shot I was kind of talking about, it's uh, not the easiest to do, but it's uh, definitely effective if you can manage to hit the shot. So the next thing that we'll briefly talk about is uh, tent placement and tripod stand placement. Now, uh, like I said earlier, if you're on console, you get the tents for free. If you're on PC, you do have to purchase the tent DLC. And the tripod DLC, you have to purchase on all platforms, but... It is going to be very helpful for creating uh, spawn points across the map at different zones that you really want to hunt often. Uh, for example, we've got a couple of them over here at this lake, so we're going to go ahead and fast travel over to that lake over there. Now with uh, the tents, there's a couple different ways that you can go about placing them as to not spook animals. You do need to make sure that you're at least 200 meters away from any animal zones, uh, just so that you don't end up spooking anything. Alternatively though, you can do a different strategy where let's say you have two zones that are like three or 400 meters apart. Uh, in this case, I've got a zone over here and I also have zones that are over here as you guys can see right there. So what I do in situations like this that is actually pretty effective is I've got my tent right here. I jump into this sand that I've got placed here. I shoot whatever animals I can get at either of these drink zones right here. And then when I fast travel over to this one, because we had this tent on top of this zone, those animals will not have rendered in until you move far enough away. So when we fast travel to this, these animals over here will actually appear. And just like that, we've got a bunch of uh, rabbits on top of where we just fast traveled from, along with a bunch of white-tailed deer over there. 
and as we uh, spook off all these ducks. But uh, yeah, it's one of the cooler little tricks that you can do with tents. And now we've got a uh, black tailed deer there as well. But as you guys saw, we were just over there. None of those animals were there. But since we fast traveled out of uh, a certain distance, then they decided to spawn in. I believe you have to walk like 180 or 200 away and then they'll start appearing. But it is pretty nice. It definitely is uh, helpful for not spooking animals. The next thing I recommend is doing missions. I currently have the mission system turned off, but I'll briefly turn it on just to kind of show you guys what you can uh, do with it. So missions are incredibly good for getting money and XP early on. There's a lot of different types of missions. I've already done some of them as you can see, so you won't start with the same missions that I've got here. However, they are a great way to earn money. It'll uh, tell you kind of like where to go. Like for example, uh, it shows that we need to be here. It'll show you different things on the map and also you'll have uh, like markers that you can have placed uh, based off of different points of interest you have to go to during the mission. There will uh, sometimes be mission markers on your screen that'll help you uh, kind of guide you in that direction. Uh, we don't have them right now because this mission doesn't require it, but uh, let's just place a waypoint. It'll be similar to a waypoint, just look a little bit different. Now, one really cool thing that a lot of people still don't know for some reason about Call of the Wild is the fact that you don't need to own a map DLC in order to play that map. You're still able to play it completely for free as long as you play it in multiplayer. So, for example, you won't be able to ever create a multiplayer session on that map, but let's say there's some sessions up, you can join one of them without actually having to own the DLC, which is really good. And the reason I mention this is because there's going to be quite a bit of animals on other maps that are great for leveling up and making money uh, that you won't have access to in the two uh, beginner maps. The species that we're going to be focusing on in multiplayer for this portion of the video is the fallow deer because fallow deer are incredibly plentiful in Tiawaroa, which is the map that you will be going to in order to find them. If you follow this river, there is going to be a lot of fallow deer all the way through here. And if you're looking to earn some money early on or earn some XP, you start right here and you can run over here, unlock this outpost, and then next thing you know, you can hunt lots of fallow deer. And you can do it completely for free without having to purchase any of the DLCs just by joining a multiplayer session on Tiawaroa. So what we're going to do is uh, get down a little bit closer and then take a shot on some of these fallow deer. Uh, there's going to be quite a few herds of them as we go down as well. Alright, so this fallow deer right here is broadside. He's going to give us the perfect shot. We're going to go ahead and put a shot into him. And when you are trying to make money... Uh, you're going to want to shoot as many of them as you can. Don't really worry about uh, hunting pressure or anything like that. Unless you want to be courteous to the host of the server, which I do recommend being courteous to the host. Uh, try not to shoot more than three over one zone, even if you're in multiplayer, because it does affect that person's map. It'll affect it just as if it's your map. So I don't recommend uh, making too much hunting pressure over top of other people's zones. It's uh, just common courtesy when you're playing in multiplayer. So we have moved up the river like not even that much. We just shot the fallow deer right here. We've barely moved up at all. And we've got some more fallow deer right here. And this pretty much continues up most of the river clear to about this point right here. So you have a good like thousand meter stretch in total where there's going to be fallow deer. Now everybody's map is a little bit different so they will be placed differently. Uh, however... It's a pretty good bet that you'll find lots of fallow deer along the river, so if you're looking for cash and XP early on, definitely recommend this as a uh, method to do so, because just in this small area, we've had three herds of fallow deer, and they give a decent amount of money and XP as well. Another thing I did actually uh, forget to mention earlier in the video, and I really should have mentioned this towards the beginning, uh, but you can change the time by going to the bed in any of your outposts. I uh, probably should have mentioned that earlier. We're kind of far in this video now, but uh, that's how you do it for anybody that was curious. And uh, that's how you'll change it to whatever time you may need for whatever species you're going for. But anyway, there is uh, another different money-making method that's probably much better than the fallow deer. Uh, the only downside is it does require you to purchase a DLC. In fact, a couple DLCs if you want to reach max efficiency. So. 
Well, you need to buy the uh, Goose DLC first. I believe it's called the Wild Goose Chase uh, DLC, and this will give you access to the Goose Collar, all the Goose decoys, and also the 20 gauge Strecker side-by-side -side shotgun. And you'll be able to get these for free out of the store once you purchase the DLC. So I highly recommend that if you're going to do this method, uh, get as many of the shotguns as you can. Because it is uh, pretty good to have more than one of them on you. And I'm going to show you why very shortly. But basically what you'll want to do is uh, use your layout blind, ground blind, tripod. Doesn't really matter what you use uh, as long as it conceals you. And then just call. You will have to place the decoys into a field, but there's lots of fields on Hirschfeld and any of them will do. There's no place that's better than another really. The only thing that I look at when I'm looking for a goose spot is I want it to be really open so that we have plenty of uh, angles that we can shoot from. After you've been calling for a while, you will uh, see some geese eventually come in and we actually have two flocks of them coming in this time. Uh, we're gonna spot all of these, make sure none of them are a super high level. Doesn't uh, look like it's so far, but now that we have a bunch of geese coming in, uh, we're just gonna basically wait for them to get close. For the geese, you will want to use the 20 gauge birdshot or 20 gauge steel birdshot. Uh, those will be the only two ammo types that you can use with this particular shotgun. And it's gonna be the only ones with this shotgun that are uh, usable on birds. So now they've started to get closer, they're trying to land, we're gonna go ahead and Fire both shells and then switch to one of our other shotguns. Fire off the other shells. Uh, now that they're farther away, if you have purchased weapon pack one, you can take out the 22 and try to hit them as they're flying away. You will need to leave them a little bit because of the uh, limited range and a uh, very slow travel time of the 22 long rifle. Okay, that actually looks like a rare, possibly, and that's a pretty good level rare as well. Uh, that, that might be, uh, one of my best geese ever, actually. Hold on. I think we just got a really good goose as I'm trying to do this, uh, guide. Um, let's, uh, real quickly just snatch up some of these, but basically, you just want to do this repeatedly. Just claim every single one of them. Gives you, like, a thousand cash, basically, and also, like, 150 XP approximately it's a really good way to level up and make money so if you don't mind buying a couple of the DLCs this is probably the way to go to uh, level up your account but uh, right now I'm kind of more interested in just seeing what this was I think this was a rare oh my gosh it is I think no maybe not maybe not this might just be a brown hybrid okay it is just a brown hybrid uh, it's a big one though, that's a good brown hybrid. So these guys are an uncommon, they're not a rare, uh, but they're not something that you see super commonly. So uh, they are kind of cool, but they're not really a rare. That That's a beautiful goose though. Pretty nice brown hybrid. And as you can see in just the time that we've been down claiming, there's already more geese coming in. Uh, just kind of shows you how quickly they start arriving. Uh, if you get caught in a situation where you're not in your blind, uh, you can go ahead and just try to snipe them, get as many of them down as you can, um, provided I could get the lead right. That would be fantastic, but I am terribly off right now, so that is what it is. Oh, there we go. N now we're hitting them, apparently. Uh, but yeah, you guys get the idea. Just repeat this. There's uh, lots of goose guides out there, so uh, I would take a look at one of those if you're going to do this method. Now there's really not too much left to go over that I can think of at least, and this video is becoming really long, so uh, we're just going to talk about two more things briefly. Uh, one of them is the 22 trick. If you have purchased Weapon Pack 1 and have access to the 22, uh, provided you're over 150 meters away, you can shoot with the 22 next to an animal, and it will cause it to go alert, which will make it reposition a little bit, and that can be used to try and get a good shot on an animal that might not be giving you the broadside shot you're after. And last but not least, we're gonna talk about what I consider to be one of the best ways to uh, see lots of rares and diamonds, and that is multiplayer hopping. So basically what that is, is you essentially go into a multiplayer server, and uh, once you kind of learn some of the locations that you can find certain species at, you can uh, just basically jump into a server, check all those spots, 
if there's nothing good, just leave the server, join another server, do the same thing, and you can just repeat that until you find some good things. Uh, obviously, you won't want to do this until you know a little bit more about the game and kind of understand the drink zones of each animal, or at least the animal that you're trying to hunt. And then you can do the multiplayer hopping to see lots of people's different uh, populations of animals, which is pretty effective at getting some good trophies. But I think that's going to be it for this video. I can't really think of anything else that I want to go over right now. But let me know in the comments if you guys want me to go more in depth on any particular point that I talked about in this video. Or if there's something else that you'd like to learn more about. I know there's going to be a lot of new people coming into the Call of the Wild community very soon. Uh, and by the time this video goes out, it will already have happened. But yeah, let me know if there's anything else you guys want me to cover. If you're brand new to the channel, be sure to subscribe, click that like button, and ring that notification bell so you guys will never miss another video. And with that being said, I will see you all in the next one. Peace!